Now, the perspective I want to approach these two thoughts from is what Jesus himself said. You know, Jesus speaks of two pathways. He speaks of two pathways. In Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to read verse 13 and 14. Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. So here we find that Jesus speaks about two pathways. I'm going to refer to the first one as the common pathway. Because Jesus says many people, the majority of people, choose that pathway. And why do they choose it? He says that this pathway is broad. Now, naturally speaking, if you are driving on the road and you see two paths, one looks narrow and bumpy, and the other one is wide and smooth and inviting, the natural human inclination is to take the wide one because we think that one is easier and it's more pleasing to us. And Jesus says the majority of people take this one. So I'm going to refer to that pathway as the common pathway, right? Now, in my experience, because I think all of us on this platform can say that we have experienced both pathways. In my experience, even though I, even though I was born in a Christian home, there are times when I found myself on the, broad, on the broad pathway. In my experience, the underlying principle that governs those on this pathway is self-governance. Those who are on this pathway run things themselves. They are in charge of everything they do. And they make the decisions in their lives. They take matters into their own hands. Now, naturally, every human believes in what they can see. They believe in what their eyes tell them, and they believe in what they think is rational. So therefore, most people gravitate towards this pathway. right? On this pathway, if you want to be a good Christian, you know what you have to do? You have to work for it. You have to make the effort to accomplish it. You have to take the steps necessary to achieve it. It is all in your hands. On this pathway, you better make sure that you work all your life to be rich. Because when the time comes that there's a crisis, you have to make sure that you can buy your way out of it financially because nobody else is there to help you. And when you become old and you have to retire, you better make sure that you have a proper stash put away to take care of yourself because nobody else will be there that you can fall back on. Everybody else, everybody who is on the broad, the broad pathway has to do this. You have to do it yourself. You better make sure that you have the necessary institutions to fall back on when you are sick. You better make sure that you have a good health insurance plan. You have enough money to pay for a good doctor to see a proper specialist if you are sick. You have to make sure you put all these things in place because you have nobody else to fall back on. In terms of your mental health, make sure you know a good shrink or a good psychologist. Because when the stresses and the pressures of life reach you, you have nobody you can turn to. So you have to make sure that you have these human establishments, friends maybe, family members that you can fall back on to help you to manage that stress. And so the point I'm making is that everybody who is on the broad pathway falls under the umbrella of having to govern themselves. They have to run their own lives. And so everything they do must be done by themselves. If you're talking about physical security, when you consider the brazen, blatant, rampant crime that is taking place, just today, three men were killed just about five minutes away from where I'm living. Just one man just walked in and shot the three of them in broad daylight. He didn't even take the trouble of wearing a mask. All of those who are on the broad pathway, you know what? You better make sure that you can hire some sturdy bodyguards. You better make sure that you have 
a very sturdy and dependable security system or make sure that you have a firearm to defend yourself because there's nothing else for you to fall back on. The police can't help you, right? But the thing is, for all those who think this broad pathway is easy, you know what? They're under an illusion. It seems easy. But what I have discovered from personal experience, there's a saying that my father likes to use. The way of the ungodly is hard. It's hard. Because you have to do everything for yourself. So Jesus talked about another pathway. He called it the straight gate. And this week we have been referring to that same pathway as the elevated pathway. And what is the underlying principle that governs those on this pathway? You know what it is? I have been happy to rediscover recently, and I've been living by this. It is having a relationship with somebody. That's all that it is. It's having a relationship with somebody, and it is recognizing that this person is good and has my best interest at heart. And because I recognize this, I submit myself to this person. The majority of humanity, it is not human nature to submit yourself to anybody. And so this is why the majority of Christendom takes, the majority of the world, sorry, takes the wide path where they don't have to submit themselves to anybody. They can live their own lives. On the elevated pathway, you realize that you can't control your own life. Otherwise, it's going to constantly end in disaster. It has to be given to somebody who is stronger than you. And so that is what living on the elevated pathway means. Having a relationship with this person and submitting yourself to him. And then you know what? All of a sudden you discover that you don't have to try to be a Christian anymore because now you are associated with the only one who is righteous. And righteousness now comes naturally. On the wide pathway, you work for 50 years and you are just as bad as you were from on day, on day one because you are doing it yourself. You don't have to worry about securing yourself financially. That does not have to be your priority. Because the one who is your friend and master says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek me first. And then what? The house you need to live in, the clothes you need to wear, the bills you need to pay, the money you need to survive after you retire, all those things will be added unto you. It will come from this person, but he must be the priority. That sounds very easy to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah indeed, Brother Ted. You don't have to worry about your mental state. I don't need to know a shrink or a psychologist because you know what? The one who is my friend and my master is the wonderful counselor. He is the comforter who is with me always. And he can control everything. So I don't need to stress about anything. I don't need to worry about having enough money to see a shrink or a psychologist. I don't need to worry about physical security. Because the one who is my friend and master, you know what? He's the commander of legions of angels. He's the mighty one of Israel that none can stand against. And it is the same person that says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So when I hear that three men are killed just next door, or they rob a shop jump down the road, you know what? I pity those people. The way I've done Godly is hard. But I serve someone who is mightier than anything that I can face down here. Amen. On the elevated pathway, I am safe. I am safe. You talk about sickness. You talk about having a proper medical plan. My friend and my master is the great physician. He is the great physician and nothing is impossible for him. You know, Hallelujah. I know my 10 minutes are up, but I can't finish without sharing a short experience that I had. A few weeks ago, my little son, you know, we woke up at 4.30. It was a Sabbath morning at that. We woke up at 4.30 to find him I don't know if he was having a, 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 an epileptic attack or what, but his, he was spasming all over his body. He was salivating profusely, and his eyes were, all I was seeing were, were, were the whites of his eyes. He, he, he wasn't responding at all, right? 
behaving almost as if when, when somebody is poisoned. And Virgin, I'm telling you, I have never been as terrified in my life as I was that morning. I was afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was afraid. You know, I was thinking all kinds of thoughts and I was saying, Lord, I just have him now for one year and 19 months. Am I going to lose him? I'm just starting to know him. I, I love this boy more than I love myself. What point is there in me living on if I lose him? And I was thinking all kinds of negative things. And we were all afraid, I'm, I'm being honest. But you know what? If I was on the common pathway that morning, I would have been doomed. Because all I would have to depend on that day was the expertise of the professionals, the word of the doctors who don't know much themselves, and my son's life would probably have been gone. But I'm telling you, in that moment, when we turned to the Lord and we petitioned him, I knew that I was talking to somebody who was listening to me, number one. He was feeling what I was feeling, number two. And he was able to do something about it, number three. And that is the kind of person whose mercy I was at that morning. Hallelujah. When we put our faith in him, and I watched with my two eyes as I, as I saw my son come back around to 100% normal in a few minutes. And I resolved in my mind that you straight is the pathway, but it's a pathway I will never leave or let go for the rest of my life. Because this person who walks with me on that pathway, to whom shall I go if I leave him? To whom shall I go? In this person on this pathway, I have found everything that I could ever need in my life. And I am happy. So, I want to say for all of you, for all of us brethren tonight who are walking on this pathway, to those poor, ignorant, lost souls out there, who don't understand. It might seem to them like this pathway, this elevated pathway, it's narrow and it's straight and it's hard and it's something that you want to turn away from and you want to keep going down this seemingly broad way that is easy and that everything goes according to how you want it to go. You know what our job is? Our job is to enlighten them and to show them the truth of the illusion that they are living. Because this pathway that we are on, this elevated pathway, it is sweet and it is something that I will never let go. Jesus says that my yoke is easy. It's easy because somebody else is doing everything for me. Somebody else has taken charge of all the things that I used to do and fail at. And so it is easy. All I have to do is submit to him. And my job is done. 